this mothership trip to the Everglades is probably one of my, my all-time favorite, man. No doubt, to get there and have the luxury to really see that place and investigate it like it deserves to be investigated, that was what I was the most excited about, and we did it in style. <laughs> this is great, Troy. Hey, Tom. Nice, man. I got him. Now you can take it easy on him. Nice snook. Nice. Yeah, that's a good Very one. Man. Nice, that's a daymaker right there. Yes, look at that guy. That is a shark. That's the biggest fish I've ever caught. Woo! I thought you said you had to him relax. Oh, dude, he just ripped my boat off. Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. So we got a little front coming in, I guess. Yeah. So what, what's that gonna do to us? You know, I think today, the sooner we get over there, the better for the tarpon. Right. And then today and, and maybe tomorrow morning before it gets cold, we might get into the, the tarpon a bit. And then once it starts cooling off, um, the snook and red should be happy, you know. And what about uh, the temperature? You think it's going to drop much? Have you, see, you seen that? I saw that we might have some lows, you know, right around 50 in the mornings. But 50? Then, yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. That's a cold front. And then, um, and then getting up to, uh, you know, 72, 75. Um, so it shouldn't be too bad. Let's hope. Um, but it'll be an adventure. All right. They should have, you know, plenty of good food out there for us. We got plenty of gear. Yep, I think we're in good shape. Some crabs. Yeah, I was up there last year um, and uh, had good luck sight casting the crabs to some fish. I can't heard. wait to see it. I bet we see a lot of bird life and see alligators and crocodiles up there? Uh, when you get far enough up, yes. I mean, we can go up far enough in like Tarpon Bay and some areas where we're catching largemouth. Really? Yeah, largemouth. Maybe mouth. if it blows 25, that's what we do. We gotta do a largemouth. Largemouth expedition. So we've done a lot of trips over the years. I'd say that, that this, uh, this mothership trip to the Everglades is probably one of my, my all-time favorite, man. No doubt, it was cool because that area where we went, the Shark River, is just so hard to get to. And if you look at a map, when I've been telling people about this trip that we took, you know, after the fact, it's like, you know, why is that, why is that so special? It's just, you know, just an obscure spot on the, on the coast of Florida, but it's not, you know, it's, it's in the Everglades National Park for one thing, so there's no development anywhere around. For 100 and miles. If, if you look up, up to like Chukaluski, Naples, Fort Myers, that area where there's a big, big, um, you know, population of people, it takes about a half a tank of gas to get, get down to that area. And it takes about a half a tank of gas from Flamingo and about a half a tank of gas from Marathon. So you're gonna get people that go to that area. They're gonna get there, they're gonna be able to fish just a little bit around the outside, but then they're gonna have to go home. But to get there and have the luxury to really see that place and investigate it like it deserves to be investigated, that was what I was the most excited about, and we did it in style. You know, I've always dreamed about being able to stay up there. I've camped on the beach occasionally um, with the family and stuff, but to be able to go up there and, and stay on that mothership, that was incredible. Leave from Hawks Cay, it was pretty cool because you got to come from Hawks or from Key West, met here at Hawks Cay. We had guys coming from Miami um, here. Shafter went to, to Flamingo, and then we Troy, had a journey. Troy came from. Um, from Fort Myers. That's right, our friend Troy Pruitt came over from Fort Myers and met us there. So, I mean, we literally came from four different directions um, and all met in the middle. How's it going? Good, man, good. Nice to see you. Love your boat, you, man. This is awesome. Thank this is you. Great. This is really cool. Come on in. We got a lot of gear. We'll unload some of that and then maybe we can fish this afternoon, huh? Even though you're close and and uh, you can go up there a lot, that's still an area that is not really we don't really know it that well because it's hard. I mean, it's just remote. So enlisting the, the help of your friend Troy oh, was yeah. huge. I mean, he knows that area like the back of his hand. He is so dialed in in that area from Shark River, right where we were, right. all the way to Chukaluski, which that is the area that we have spent the least amount of right. time. And you know, to have him come up and be able to show us 
that area as well as he knows, and then we could explore some of the areas we were more familiar right. with. Right, that was really cool, because we show up and Troy's already there. He and Shafter are getting to know one another, and Troy's unpacking his stuff, and, and I, you know, I was kind of worried about this whole deal a little bit, because, you know, a houseboat and everything like that, but everybody on that boat got their own room, had their own bathroom, their own shower, Shafter couldn't have been nicer. He was just awesome. So the trip got off to just a great start as we meet meet there at the boat. And the next thing, you know, Troy's like, "Hey, man, let's go fishing." So if the wind cl clocked out of here, we could we could get in. Yeah. That's the coolest thing about where we're at now. Even in a kayak, you know, you can make it all the way to Naples to go in the back country. Yeah. Um, or shoot right, over from there. Let's go hit this area right here. A few of these rivers in here on this uh, incoming water. You what are we doing? Looking for tarpon or snook or what? Snook and reds, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We got some pilchards that we got, so try those. Yeah, the bushes? Yeah, or some what? big ones. Just fish in the bushes and the moisture bars. Mm -hmm. See how it goes for snook and reds. Let's go, cool, man. So, I've, 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 put, I've, I've always taken you fishing in the Keys. First time you know. take me fishing in your backyard. A little different color water down there. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Definitely. Let's go. Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Mercury Marine, celebrating 75 years of marine excellence. Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Lorance, find, navigate, dominate. True Flies, life off the chart. And by Costa Sunglasses and Motor Guy. What an amazing trip. You know, every time I go to the Everglades, but even, you know, further over like that, where you see zero development, there yep. is nothing up there. That's what Florida used to look like. And it is just such a beautiful, pristine area that really reminds me, the only other place that I've been even remotely like that is, uh, is, is the coast of Australia, where there is absolutely no development, bunch of rivers flowing out. It's a very similar uh, vegetation. But you know, just, just pristine area. And we have that here in the United States, right here. Amazing. You know, and even though it's just right there, it's still just far enough away from all of these population centers that, that it's very, very difficult to get to. So that houseboat was key. Jack Carell. No. Nope. Let me get his brother. Nice. A bit of bluefish. Whoa, bluefish. bluefish. That's what ate my bait over there. That's a wintertime species there, right? That's, that's wild. I would have never have thought to catch a bluefish right here. Huh. Is that something that you catch around here? No. Nope. We catch those in Key West in the wintertime quite yeah, a few. Yeah, I definitely. I actually even had some women's world records in bluefish. Out of all the things I would imagine we would got a bite I bet on, that's a bluefish what bit was on one of them. <laughs> bluefish in that really <laughs> Hey, whoa, there he is. Fish that's on the double header. Right Get him, buddy. Get him, Tom. That's the right one. Get him, brother. There's no blue fish. Under those oh, bushes. yeah. Good job, Tom. Can we have a red fish? Good job, Tom. Nice fish, blue fish. One fish, two fish. <laughs> this is great, Troy. Get him, Tom. Nice, man. Yeah. I got him. Now you can take it easy on him. Nice Good snook. Job. You want to get him? You got him. Yeah, get him. You need to be held the boat I want to see you. how a real Everglades man does it. You got a grip on you. You shook my hand about broke it, so I'm sure you can grab this fish. You're going to have that bad boy, Tom. Nice. You know what? I'm going to keep that bluefish for bait. Yeah. And how often do you get a snook bluefish double? <laughs> that is something. What kind of slam is that, right, Tom? He got it pretty good. Nice job, dude. Nice. nice. My first snook. Troy, way you're up. the man. Good job, brother. Good job. <laughs> way, way up. Nice. In the Everglades. I love it. Well, they look just hey, like all the other snakes. If, if we had had a redfish and a bluefish, that'd have been something. I'd have been like, uh, my kids would have been like, that's the coolest thing. Uh, I don't know what kind of slam that what you call that. A red and blue. Uh, a snook and a blue, right? The Dr. Seuss snack <laughs> slam. Well, I'm going to keep this uh, this bluefish now. See, those, those, those teeth are huge, man. I was, I, the last thing I thought that I'd catch in there. In the Everglades, you know, in one of these rivers was a bluefish. So we had a double header, yeah. snook and bluefish. Yep, snook and bluefish. That, that wasn't that wasn't expected, but I think Troy said that was one of the first bluefish he'd ever seen. I'm sure that was probably associated with that cold weather that came in, you know, moves things around, does some 
does some, you see some weird stuff when that kind of stuff happens. And he's ready to go. It's a good stuff, oh, man. he just bit my finger. <laughs> nice That's job. Cool. All right. Nice job. Good job That's pretty man. cool. Yes, it is. Well, I like pulling them out of those bushes, man. You, you knew that was the right bite, didn't you? Yep. I like pulling them out of those bushes. Troy had it all dialed in. He knew exactly what the tide yeah. was. And it wasn't like, oh, let's go look around a little bit like we would have done. It was, we're going here, we're going here, we're going here. And then we're going to backtrack and go to all these other spots because he had a milk route, you know? You he did. knew that tide, he knew what was going on, and he went and he was determined to put us on the fish. And it was very obvious as soon as we got there, man, if you make a cast tight enough to the bushes, you had a really good chance of getting bit. There we go. Got it. Got him. There you go, buddy. Good job, Tom. Good That's fish, Tom. Good fish, Tom. Nice snook, buddy. Good job, brother. Yeah. Got it, Nice, dude. Nice. Awesome. <laughs> That's fun, man. Because you just it's know that there's one around there. What he was looking for is he's looking for those those fish not to be way up in the trees where they right. can't see him. Right. And not to be too far out with that in-between tide. And you can just see him him get excited and light up and you know when, when he knew it was gonna happen. You're looking for that magic depth of water, and he knew exactly what that was to where if you make a good cast, you want it to where that fish is either just pushing up in there trying to get further, yep. or he's pushing out, but he's still got the protection of the mangroves, so he feels very, very comfortable. You put it next to the mangroves, you make a good cast that gets his attention, they'll dart out and get it, and, and he just knew that that was, that was it. And you know, in order to know that, you've got to know so much about that area and how far that cuts back under there and where to go on the super low water and where yep. to go when it's just coming in. And you know, he, he has that so dialed and, and it was a pleasure to fish with him. Wait a man. I'll tell you what, you're right, that snook fishing has come back. Man. It has come back, it really has. I mean, we're getting a bite. Every single one of these, these trees it's down has a fish on. Yeah, that's great. There are a lot of programs now that are trying to, to improve the habitat and improve the numbers of the snook. And uh, I'm not sure that area necessarily needs it because there seem to be plenty of snook up there. But the snook is just such a, such a great game fish and they get big and boy, when those things turn and go towards the mangroves, they are determined yeah. to get back in there. And it is just about everything you can do to stop them. That was awesome, man. You put us on the meat. Man, that was great. Love seeing this wind dying out. Yeah. We might be able to get in something else this afternoon, too. Yeah, Good deal. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. <laughs>
from Plano, you can keep your tackle organized and it's going to allow you to go from boat to boat easily and quickly. So man, when it got right, it, you know, Troy knew it wasn't too high, it wasn't too low, it was just right. And, and, and uh, we caught some snook on that first point and looking up that shoreline, you could see there was another point and another point and we started anticipating, you know, all right, let's, you know, we made a couple casts on the way, but you knew that there's some blowdowns and logs on these little points that the, the snook were gonna be sitting there. You got him? Yeah, you got him. Thanks. Under you, over you. Nice job, Troy. Right here, buddy. Well, we got a hot spot here now. Man, the log of doom. We finally found a, a spot where they are loving it. Man, bring them over to it's the tide, just like you said, man. They all yeah. came out of those bushes. You got it, man. Yep. And now they're staging on this point. That's what it yeah. is, huh? I would go with a 25 or 30 pound leader, you know, for the fishing that I do because it's so clear that I want to use the lightest leader that I possibly can. But, you know, Troy was 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 adamant, 40 pound leader, you know, because you're putting a ton of pressure on that fish. He's got a very sharp gill plate and rough mouth. Not only that, he's taking you back into the mangrove. So the 40 pound leader was a good idea. But they are pretty, man. Well, I'll tell you what, my pilcher did not want to be in there by that log. He swam all the way out here while I was looking at that fish. Tom, we should go back to jig, you think? I think. <laughs> I think Tom's <laughs> good. <laughs> the fish that we're working with, that we've put a lot of focus in here at Moat Marine Lab, is common snook which couldn't be reared when I came here. And our aquaculture team has done a fantastic job looking at the survival patterns of these stock fishes. And one of the things that we're doing to that end here at Moat Marine Lab is we've got this pond behind us that we've built as the ultimate snook freshwater habitat. And again, snook is what's called a catadromous animal. They spawn in seawater, but they grow up in brackish and freshwater. And they can withstand pure freshwater. But we've built what we think is, is uh, ideal habitat for them. And then we've stocked that habitat in addition to the studies we've been doing in the bay. We've stocked this pond, this is about a three acre pond, with uh, snook and let them grow up to test ideas about the effectiveness of marine stock enhancement. But snook can survive in some pretty tough habitats. Their limitation is temperature. Another reason for working with that animal to test stock enhancement potential is that they are close to their physiological barrier to, to low temperatures. If you go much further north than Cedar Key on the west coast of Florida, during the cold winters, snook are killed back. In fact, we had a cold winter freeze that knocked snook populations down all the way uh, uh, down the whole coast of southwest Florida. So another potential use of, of hatchery snook is to rapidly bring back that next year class that would, is probably missing since so many adults were knocked out from the um, cold, hard winter freeze. We also have red tides on the west coast of Florida that kill many species of fish. And when it takes the adults out and takes literally 90, 95% of them out, then it takes years for what's left in the system to bring back the fish abundance levels to what they previously were. In general, uh, hatcheries can be effective in those kind of situations as well. I'll tell you what, you're right, that snook fishing has come back, man. It has come back, it really has. The Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K, the only key you'll need. The Florida Keys in Key West, come as you are. Marine Formula Stable protects against the damaging effects of ethanol fuels in marine engines and by Loadmaster. We love to communicate with fans of the show. Now, while I'd like to meet everybody face to face, sometimes that's just not possible, but there are other ways. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Ask questions and get advice from both me and Rich. And don't forget about our YouTube page where you can see behind the scene videos and full length shows. We hope to see you there. Nice.
Is that not filter? Come on, troll. Yeah, buddy. That's a big sucker. <laughs> Come on, brother. That's a big fatty there. Like the old days, Rich. Yeah, Rich, man. Grab him, grab him there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's, that's a good one there. Nice, that's a daymaker <laughs> right there. What's up, brother? Look nice at job. that guy. You knew you had nice. a bite there. Nice. Yeah, you knew that. You that's cool. Right Look how dark he is. I, I noticed that right away how black Man. he was. Wow. That's pretty. It's nice. okay, I got the chills. <laughs> <laughs> good job, dude. Awesome. You know, I could tell that you and Troy had some good history and, and uh, I don't know him as well as you do, but man, what a fun guy. Those are the kind of guys I like to fish with. Guys that are really good and they take, they take a lot of pride in being a good fisherman, right? But you know what, bottom line, they're there to have some fun, yeah. you know? Sometimes we get a little too serious about the fishing, I think. And, it's true. Well, and, we, well uh, the, the benefit was is we didn't have to worry about bait or fishing right. spots. We were just along for the ride. It was right. great. That is a nice feeling, right? But great day, great way to start this adventure. And uh, you know, there's just so much more that we can do in this area to explore and just to see what's up here. It's just one of the coolest trips that we've done. I've always wanted to come up here and do this with you, man. Man, like I said, Rich, it's not quite as clear down there, brother. But uh, <laughs> oh, this, look at this. It's it's, it's gorgeous. Payback, I owe you. <laughs> <laughs>